Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel once again with a new video. Uh, today our topic is how to design enclosed parking ventilation system or you may call it a basement ventilation system because nowadays the, uh, all the parking system are in basement. So we need to ventilate that basement in case of fire and in case of uh, a smooth exhaust from the uh, that cars. Why we need it? Uh, the park, uh, car park ventilation system because we need to remove the uh, the fumes uh, or the gases generated by the uh, the cars and other uh, thing that maybe a generator or something in the basement or in the parking area. So we need to ventilate that with a proper supplier and exhaust air. Uh, so we have different standards uh, to follow like ASHRAE, NFPA, uh, British Standard. So I will teach you how to uh, use these and how to design a better uh, car park ventilation system. So as per ASHRAE uh, 62-2001, this is the older version. Uh, in this you can see they use 1.5 uh, CFM per uh, square feet. So for uh, uh, the air flow requirement, how much air you want to introduce into the basement and how much you will uh, exhaust like this will be a balance uh, like 1200 cfm uh, uh, fresh air or outdoor air and 1200 cfm will be exhaust so how we will calculate it so we will multiply the 1.5 with the total area of the car park so we will get the air flow rate in cfm for the car park and you can use it for uh, exhaust. So uh, this is a very simple uh, way which is uh, defined by the ASHRAE but there are different methods, uh, other methods defined by ASHRAE in a handbook. I will discuss it later. So this, this is the first method. Uh, the second method is uh, air changes per hour. It is according to the, the British standard 734-67-2013 edition uh, in which you can see at the end you can, uh, I will share this uh, presentation, you can read it uh, thoroughly. Uh, so I will discuss it briefly. Uh, uh, here you can see that the exit and ramps provision should be made for a local uh, ventilation rate of at least 10 air changes per hour. You need at least 10 air changes per hour in to ventilate the car park or the car parking area or the basement area where you where your uh, parking area is. So, this is the simple method. You need to calculate the length, width, uh, height. So, you uh, you will get the volume. Uh, you need to calculate the volume, multiply the volume with the uh, air changes and divided by 60, you will get the required uh, air flow rate for the car parking ventilation. So, uh, if the uh, car uh, as per NFP and, and as per ASHA, if the car park is open, you don't need to uh, do a mechanical ventilation, it will be uh, naturally ventilated. So, it is for enclosed parking system, not for open. And this is another uh, reference uh, as per the NFPA 88A. Uh, here you can see they say that uh, for park enclosed parking structure shall be ventilated by a mechanical system capable of providing a minimum of one cubic feet per minute per feet square mean one cfm per feet square like you have an area of 1200 square foot you need 1200 cfm to be exhaust from that area so this is defined by the nfp now this is the another method defined by the ASHRAE to calculate how much air changes and how much CFM per feet square is required. You can uh, uh, you can read it by yourself. It's, it's not uh, like complicated. You just need a number of cars and the average of this, uh, these values in summer and winter for the emission rate in pound per hour and you need to just like a number of cars and this value see uh, okay they were, were now uh, after this in ventilation which is uh, the major, major part is demand control ventilation the first we discussed was the like 
you need to put a single speed fan that is running at a 10 air changes per hour to remove that much air but this this, this is not a good solution you need a uh, like a VLD drive fan or a, a three speed fan to run at a different speed depend on the carbon di uh, carbon monoxide level so we consider maximum 25 35 according to a different standards i will discuss it later so here we uh, like we need to maintain a 25 if if the co level uh, like increase above the 25 the carbon monoxide sensor the co sensor detect the uh, carbon monoxide level and it will increase the speed of fan so uh, we will be uh, as a basic of 35 ppm and that is the uh, time average entrance and exit time for a vehicle so we are taking as a average you can uh, you can read it uh, thoroughly by yourself and you can calculate it by using this example uh, you will you need to use this table and this table you calculate it here is the design method they mentioned co emission and is the number of car here you will get each and everything you just need to put these values and calculate it depend upon on your scenario how much area you have how much ppm you want to maintain and these things so you just need to read it thoroughly so like we discussed these fans uh, will not run continuously at high CFM. It will run in case the CO level is detected high. So you need a three-speed fan or rear drive fan to work like this. So we now we will discuss about the CO sensor. First, we will discuss how to calculate the air. You need that much air to be exhausted. But like when you calculate the air as per the British standard, like 10 air changes per hour, you get for example, you you got the CFM of 2000 CFM support. So you don't need to exhaust 2000 CFM continuous. You need to install a CO sensor at different spaces. We will discuss how to install this to detect the CO level. If a CO level is at 20 FPM, uh, uh, ppm, uh, it will run at a first speed. And if it's about 25 ppm, it will run at a third speed. And if it detects high ppm of CO, it will run at a high speed it's mean there is a smoke in the building there may be a fire or something or there may be a high level of carbon monoxide due to a continuous running engines in the basement so you can uh, read this uh, these i will uh, i will summarize this like you need a co sensor for approximately five to ten thousand square feet which mean you need a sensor at a radius of 49 to 50 feet it depends on a different manufacturers uh, radius so this is the basic the 49 feet some uh, uh, monoxide sensors cover more area than 50, uh, more radius than 50 feet some are less so this is the uh, optimum uh, value uh, we consider always in our design so based on the number of co sensor and location exhaust fan and makeup air handlers or makeup air fan can determine the most effective CO detection equipment to minimize the total cost of the sensor, controllers, convoyed wiring, termination, startup, and final finish. So this is the basic uh, layout. Uh, like here you can see we put a, a CO sensor in the basement at uh, 49 radius. So, like these are crossing each and every the radius of the carbon monoxide sensor so if anything happen in between them it detects and it around the fan according to it so these are the co exposure level at for a different organization that they uh, mentioned like ACGIH American Conference of Government Health, Industrial and Hygienists they like they uh, consider 25 ppm is the smallest carbon monoxide level in the basement or in the car park area or in the garage so 25 ppm if the carbon monoxide level is uh, is higher than uh, 25 ppm it, it alarm the fan and it uh, increase the uh, fan speed to minimize the ppm by introducing more fresh air and exhaust air so 
this will uh, happen like this. So these are different uh, PPM level by different authorities, by different organization, and different times. Like for uh, at 25 PPM, the exposure is eight eight hours. Mean if a person is exposed at eight hours for 25 PPM, that's just okay, no problem. If it's above 800 hours, uh, sorry, eight hours, it causes some problem for uh, human health. So it's not acceptable about these uh, values for different organization like 35 ppm for one hour 50 ppm for eight hours and these are different acceptable uh, co level at different areas uh, according to the requirement you can read it thoroughly so you will uh, you understand it better now we will discuss the sequence of operation how these fan will operate uh, to uh, like demand control validation because we don't need to run this fan at a high speed because we need to minimize the maintenance uh, running cost of these fans. So first is the threshold at the 25 uh, ppm. You need to set the CO at a uh, 25 ppm like it's a if if it's uh, below 25 ppm it will alarm a low level of a uh, CO. In this case, if at 25 ppm, start the exhaust fan at a minimum speed with the relay one. This is just a, for a specific, uh, like a, for, for uh, a specific design. Maybe there is a relay, there may be a something, but we need to understand how it works. First, the exhaust fan will start at a minimum speed, bring the fresh air, and reduce the CO level. Then, at the medium alarm level. Chip set point at 20, 75 ppm. When it goes above 75 ppm, the exhaust fan will run at a high speed to bring more fresh air and reduce the CO level. If the exhaust fan have a VFDs, like I said, preferably use the analog output associated with this exhaust fan to ramp up the VFD between 75 and 25 and 75 ppm. This is the normal range at a different exposure. So if it go above 100 ppm, then it's a high high alarm level. Then the uh, fan need to run at a high uh, at a high air volume at a high speed, uh, and it needs to be uh, alarmed by a horn or strobes installed in the ba uh, basement. So these are are done by by some controllers can uh, connected with the VFD. So you can read it and. You can follow it accordingly. So, thank you for your uh, concentration, and I will share this uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, now I will show you something uh, at the end. Here is the simple design uh, that I have done for one of my projects. Here you can see the CO sensors I installed in different locations uh, on the column. Here, here, these are all are uh, at a, almost 49 to 50 uh, feet radius, and these are all linked with the, uh, you can call it the file or a panel, and the other controller to energize this fan according to the requirement. And here is the layout of nowadays we used uh, uh, jet fans for parking ventilation uh, with the proper COD analysis, but uh, here was the uh, cost issue, um, the budget issue. So we uh, don't use jet fans. We use these vector type units. To, here is the supply uh, fan. This is the one zone supply and exhaust. This is the another zone. This zone supply and exhaust. So this is the basic uh, concept of uh, uh, like uh, car parking ventilation. Uh, here you can see we used. Uh, 20,900 CFM for a basement one and for basement two that much. And these are the supplier fans and these are the exhaust air fans. Exhaust is a little bit higher to create a negative pressure inside the basement. We just we can do it by 5% almost less than a uh, like exhaust. You need to supply a air, fresh air 5% less than exhaust so it will be better. Uh, so these are the uh, basic concepts of uh, parking ventilation where you can see this is the car these are devs are going above this so uh, 
it's it is better to bring the duct down near the exhaust level of the car to uh, exhaust the air properly it will be better so this is the one of my project i have drawn design it so here uh, the ashray handbook literature i will share all these documents with you so you can read it and you can do it by yourself it's not that much problematic thank you very much for watching my video